They said we were done for. They said it was over for us. They said we wouldn't be able to compete at the highest level for much longer. But my friends, males and females, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, whichever f***ing term you want to use, we're only just getting started. Because Todd Bowley is on a mission to put us back on the map. As if we ever left the map in the first place. But, um, yeah, when Roman Abramovich had to give up his um, ownership of Chelsea Football Club, Todd Bowley came in and they said that we wouldn't be able to compete financially. We wouldn't get owners who would be able to compete financially like Roman Abramovich. And not only that, but we would, it would be impossible for us to attain new owners who would be willing to put the money and backing financially that Abramovich put into Chelsea Football Club over the years. But we have just gone to a different level because Todd Bowley has been here, what, like six months? Maybe seven or eight months at most. And he's already on the brink of hitting the 500 million euros mark as owner of Chelsea Football Club. I mean, that is just unheard of. That is just unbelievable. And you know what I love? Is that we are going back to being the hated club. We are going back to the ones that are ruining football for everyone. And that just gives me great pleasure, you know, that I can sit here and say, my club is going to ruin football for the second time. And uh, yeah, Chelsea are on the brink, to my understanding anyway, of signing Enzo Fernandez, a 21-year-old Argentinian midfielder, currently plays for Benfica. And uh, yeah, we're about to break our club record transfer fee, 120 million euros to sign this guy who was the young player of the tournament at the World Cup just gone by and uh, yeah he could be ours in a matter of days to be honest and uh, yeah it's just it's just an absolutely unbelievable time to be a Chelsea fan when we're spending this much money now that's not to say that he won't flop and that every other player we sign won't flop because we have a horrific record in the transfer market recently but just let me be excited I mean I've got nothing more to be excited about with the football that we were playing especially before the World Cup so just just let me have this moment please but yeah Todd Bowley and Christopher Vivelli and everyone else involved in the Chelsea setup at this moment in time in the hierarchy are really treating us at this moment in time to a lot of hope I mean first of all Christopher Nkunku as we said is uh is is looking like it's very much done and according to Fabrizio Romano and other reliable sources he is a Chelsea player and can be considered a Chelsea player Benoit Badiashile young centre-back from Monaco 35 million euros looks just about done now Andre Santos a young player uh, from I think some is it a second tier Brazilian side but he looks very good once again 15 million euros and David Datro Fofana a young striker from Molda Didier Drogba's region if you didn't know that already I've seen a, a, a compilation of him and I've decided he is the next Drogba so yeah it's a decent time to be a Chelsea fan we're making a lot of good moves in the transfer market and Enzo Fernandez may just be the cherry on the cake because signing a player for 120 million euros it doesn't come around very often I don't think any Premier League clubs ever done that before off the top of my head and um, yeah Enzo Fernandez is uh, according to my knowledge and according to Fabrizio Romano and other reliable sources as I said is uh, very close to becoming a Chelsea player in the January transfer window so first of all who is Enzo Fernandez and why are Chelsea looking to pay such an astronomical transfer fee for him so first of all as I said at the start of the video he is a 20 one year old midfielder currently playing for Benfica and obviously starred at the World Cup for Argentina hence why he has such a massive transfer fee it's actually his release clause but Chelsea have apparently been working behind the scenes with Benfica to try and structure a deal with actually paying 130 million euros but so that it's not just all in one lump lump sum and that it can include like add-ons and future fees etc so we, that we get a better deal uh, in the present moment. We obviously starred at the World Cup for Argentina as I said and uh, maybe it's a coincidence maybe it's not but obviously Argentina famously lost their first game of the World Cup to Saudi Arabia by two goals to one one in probably one of the biggest shocks in World Cup history and after that game uh, Enzo Fernandez was brought into the Argentinian starting 11 by Lionel Scaloni and ever since that game obviously they went on to win every single game after that and went on to win the World Cup in quite magnificent fashion so call it a coincidence call it not a coincidence whatever you want but um, yeah that is just the facts really of what happened and yeah of course he went on to win young player of the tournament and uh, from what I've seen of him so far Enzo Fernandez because I will admit I haven't really been paying attention to him at Benfica I don't really watch that many Benfica games I will admit but from what I saw of him in his performances at Argentina, uh, he's a very good dribbler, very good in terms of ball retention, an unbelievable passer of the ball into the final third and progressive passes. Another thing I noticed as well is that he seems very good under pressure. There's a lot of times where you know opposing players were trying to press him, and uh, he's very good at evading the press. Obviously, as I said, his ball retention is very good, and he seems very cool under pressure, which could very much come in handy in a league like the Premier League, where you know the, the opposition teams are going to be pressing quite a bit and going to be on the case quite a bit of the of our players, especially because 
because it is probably the highest intensity league in the world. So here's my overall verdict on this potential signing. Now here's where maybe it does get a little bit controversial. Leave it down in the comment section below if you agree because I'd say a lot of people, 99% of people most in fact, are probably going to disagree with me. But I just think he's very similar to Mateo Kovacic, a player we already have who in my personal opinion is an unbelievable player and uh, I think he possesses a lot of the same attributes in a positive manner that Enzo Fernandez has in terms of his ball retention, cool under pressure. I think he's the best dribbling and ball carrying midfielder in the world of football. I don't think there's any midfielder in the world of football that can do what he does in terms of progressing the ball and dribbling the ball from midfield. He's very energetic as well, has a decent passing range. So I just think that we need a holding midfielder, an out and out holding midfielder more than we need another eight because I think we need a six way more. Someone like a Declan Rice or even if you want to go cheaper, someone like Zuba Mendy for Real Sociedad or Caicedo for Brighton or even Romeo Lavia for Southampton, just three players we've been linked with recently. And I think if we're going to spend this astronomical fee of obviously 120 million euros as I keep saying if we're going to spend that sort of money I kind of want it to be on an out and out holding midfielder and that's not to say we don't sign one in the summer because obviously I don't want us to just panic by a holding midfielder and someone who's not going to you know be as good as an option we could get in the summer so obviously I don't want us to as I said panic by but that's the only like downside I have really to this signing is that I think that we need more six than an eight because I think I personally believe that the, the number six position and the holding midfield position is uh, the most uh, important position and the most influential position in modern day football and we don't really have a proper one at this moment in time you can say Jorginho and you can say Kante but I just think that we need someone like you know when City have Rodri and Arsenal have Thomas Partey and Liverpool have Fabinho and Real Madrid have Chouameni and you know uh, Man United have Casemiro obviously as well I think we need someone like that in the midfield that can anchor the midfield and at the same time as well there's there's no guarantee that he will be you know a brilliant player and all he's cracked up to be for Chelsea because I know it's this this Brexit argument I like to say which is oh he, he's never played in the Premier League and obviously I think it's quite a valid argument in some cases because you know he's not done it in the Premier League he's not he's a young guy he's 21 years of age coming to the most intense and the most high pressure league in the world there's no guarantees whatsoever that he's going to adapt quick enough there's no guarantees whatsoever that he's going to be able to make it in the Premier League as we've seen for a lot of players especially players at Chelsea and uh, yeah I think that's a valid argument even though I think he is the type of player uh, I think he would adapt to the Premier League and uh, I think they'll they'll know that in the hierarchy with Todd Bowley and Vivelli etc they won't just spend this sort of money unless they truly believe he will make it in the Premier League so that's just another side side point as to why I think this might not work out and obviously the fact as well that as I said alluded to at the start of the video our transfer record with expensive transfer fees is absolutely horrendous I mean if you look at our top 10 top 15 most expensive transfers in the history of Chelsea Football Club a lot of them haven't worked out and uh, that's just another nervy point once again but I won't really hold that to the current ownership and the current hierarchy of the club because all of those transfers really were under the previous ownership where we just spent crazy money on players that never really worked out so I'm going to give us like a fresh start now with this new hierarchy of Bowley, Vivelli etc I'm going to give them like a clean slate to um to, to work out the expensive transfers and hopefully break the curse but that's just another just a few reasons why I'd be a little bit skeptical about this signing but obviously I'm going to you know be absolutely over the moon if it does happen because it's a very exciting transfer to have as a fan for your club and I've no doubt that he'll be a, he'll be a good player but it's just a matter of you know 120 million euros a lot of money to pay and obviously if it does happen I'll be over the moon once as I said because there's no way in hell that I'm not taking this transfer especially because of the fact it's it's not my money I don't really care like about transfer fees for transfers really because obviously it's not my money it's not your money it's Todd Bowley's money and it's Chelsea Football Club's money so as long as we're getting a good player that's all I really care about but yeah Chelsea fans non-Chelsea fans leave your thoughts on this signing in the uh, comment section below I'm really interested to see what you guys think of this one because it's just a really interesting one especially because it's come somewhat out of the blue I mean it's really escalated today so um yeah hopefully we can see this one over the line very very soon but yeah leave a like on the video if you did enjoy please subscribe to the channel we're fully back on this channel now so if you could sub support the channel by subscribing that would be massively appreciated and also like the video as i said as well and um yeah i'll see you in my next video and uh, chelsea football club back to ruining football